fuck up. It's time to talk business. Jared Taylor, Matt Best, and Evan Hafer proudly present Blackhearted. Sponsored by Black Rifle Coffee Company and Arson Wave. Oh, we are on fire yeah, tonight. Tank, doesn't yes. that just get you motivated? Yeah, are you Dude, motivated now? Are you motivated? Dude. I got a freedom boner from Hill. Right <laughs> <laughs> we yes. all do. Ladies and gentlemen, we, we are do. still in Vegas, which we, we will be for quite a few weeks, yeah. it seems. But we have a special guest tonight, yes, Mr. Yes. Yes. Mr. Machine. That's right, Mr. Tang Machine. Dr. That's what they Machine. Call me. That's right. Do- uh, Where did that first- come from? Dude, that's the first time I've ever heard Dr. Machine. That's fucking glorious. Dr. Really? Machine. That doctor. needs to be a t shirt. Dr. Dr. Machine. Machine. You convinced me instantly, JT. <laughs> I'm sold. I'm so sold. persuasive. Just Dr. Machine. Dr. Dr. Machine. I'm changing my name right now, Doctor. <laughs> yeah. I don't have a doctorate, but they call me Doctor. I like it. Fuck yeah. The name's so, Machine. So, yeah, where, where'd Tank. this come from? Where'd Tank Machine come Dude, it's kind of crazy, man. I, I mean, I don't want to, like, set up a sob story, but um, there's a there's a Marine named Captain Rappacold who passed away in Iraq in Ramadi, and uh, we're on a a little mission to combat outposts one day and we were pushing through and some stuff happened long story short he said tank you're a fucking machine and it kind of stuck from there and it was tank machine and then he passed away two weeks later and boom shakalaka here we are so that's a pretty like not it's a shitty story but like that's that's cool you can kind of carry that legacy with you dude i I like the nickname that he gave you Yeah, yeah so he they called him frenchy man he was from france and uh he uh, announced his citizenship to America and became a Marine. And, dude, I really looked up to that guy. He was really fucking solid, and he said it how it was. And when he said that to me that day, I mean, it kind of stuck. And, you know, back in the day, to be honest with you, it never really hit me. Right. Right. But everybody kept calling me that ever since. And so through my 13 years in the Marine Corps, man, I, I kind of went with it. And then when I got out, I was like, fuck, man. You know, I, I don't even know who the fuck I am anymore because I got out, and I think a lot of vets struggle with that. Right. And so I said, boom, tank machine it is. And, and here we are today, and you're see, killing it, bro. Here we are today. Dude. And today we're going to talk about networking. Networking. Networking and business and the importance of it. I'm sorry, but if you are a recluse and you want to be a successful business owner, those two things just it's don't It's like why I would have never been decent in business without you because I'm a horrible networker, Jared. I'm like, leave me alone. You just blew a whistle in my ear, my friend. Yeah. You better be a uh, hyper intellect with a fucking amazing invention that changes the world. That's all I got to say. If you're or, not, if you're, if you're not going to network, yeah, you better... Well, polio's already technically cured, but... Yeah, well, I'm it's talking about him. Marco. Yeah. Polio. Polio. <laughs> polio. Yeah, yeah. $5,000 so, he got for the polio cure. But that's where, essentially, you got your, your start, right? Is on social Net- media, networking. kind of networking. I mean, yeah, brother. Or at least being up. an influencer. Man, when I got out of the Marines, you know, everybody says, dude, oh, you did 13 years. Why'd you get out? And I said, man, I, I use the Marine Corps as a, as a building block, essentially, Evan. I didn't right. want to use it as a retirement. Mm-hmm. And... My focus was was to at least try to contact uh, or connect with the veteran community as much as I could, whether it was just keeping it real or helping out some type of nonprofit organization in the end. You know, I'm my own entity, man. I don't, I don't like claim fame with anybody. I get on and I say what the fuck I want to say and I do what the fuck I want to do. And I don't ever water myself down because somebody can't handle me at 100 proof. But that's why so, people enjoy you because there's a sense of authenticity. You say it how you feel it is and your exact yeah, opinion. You know. So it's, it's refreshing because people mm-hmm. tend to dub down what the fuck they believe in. And you just say, this is, what I, this is who I am. Take it or leave it, motherfuckers. Yeah, that's it. You know, there's a lot of people that... That could disagree, and a cu- but a couple hundred thousand people took it. Yeah, so dude. I think you did something right. Uh, I right. think I did too, man. <laughs> yeah. Fucking, you never, you never know. Like Instagram and Facebook, how much little stupid shit you can do and just blow it up. So when I got out, dude, I became a cop right away. And the police department said we don't like your style because you're you're just really open, and we don't know what's going to happen next. And right. so they fired me because of my social media following. Wow, are you serious? No, I swear to God, man. The chief said, I can't have an officer who could post something and change the face of my department in one day. Wow. How, how long ago was that? That was a asking. little over a year ago. Oh, shit. This is relatively Where new. At? I didn't know that. Where was yeah. that? It was in Grand Prairie, Texas. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah, so I was just like, fuck, man. I, I got out because I thought, okay, I can help help a community and I can kind of stick in the the realm of, you know, with, with Marines or, or service members and you can still have that camaraderie. And then, dude, it was literally, Matt, the biggest kick in the balls when they told me that because I thought, where the fuck am I going to go next? Right. But I had a small following, and I thought, dude, you know what, man? Fuck it. I'm going to say what I want to say, and I'm going to do what I want to do on social media, and I'm going to be who I want to be. And if people accept me for who I am, then so be it because 
the the real type of people that are going to be there for you in the end, and the fakes are going to fucking be weeded out. So I hit social media real hard, and I started what you call a Saturday Night Safety Brief. You know, mm -hmm. uh, obviously we have service members amongst us and brothers, and we're amongst family. So on Fridays, you remember we used to get those yeah, of course, safety fucking yeah. dude yeah. weak ass safety. Yeah, don't do drugs and don't fuck without a condom. Blah blah blah. So I started pounding like half bottles of whiskey on video and just going for dude, it. And then it just kind of flew from there and it turned into so much more, man, because I had kind of a rough life growing up. And so I, on top of doing some type of crazy video that I would put out, I'd put out stuff about motivation and how you can take something and turn or take nothing and turn it into something. So I thought, dude, you have a choice every day to wake up on the left side of the bed or the right. It depends if you want to be shitty or you want to be fucking great. So I said, dude, I'm going to take my pass and I'm going to make it light instead of darkness. And so that's what I started doing on social media. And then it just kind of blew up from there. And here I am today, dude. I mean, I can walk on any Marine Corps base at this point and just hang out and I'm recognized everywhere. And, and it's really humbling because we all put on our pants the same way, man. So I, I just want to just keep it real and tell the truth and be honest. And that's who I'm going to be, whether I rise to, you know, the mountaintop one day or I'm just fucking sitting stagnant. I'm going to do whatever I can to help as many people as I can. That's, That's dumb. Badass, yeah. And the, the interesting thing is, is like, it seems like now with, with social media, like you've got two different camps, in, in my opinion. You've got the people that are like raw and real and they kind of claim based, or they climb based on authenticity. People want, want that. And then you've got the people that claim authenticity and so like the Kardashians, right? Like oh, they're just right. fake fuck as fuck. And that people follow slugs. the fucking shit out of that. And I, I, I just, but that's like architected success. Like that right. whole show was built off writing and, and a premise of what they thought, you know, it's a social construct of like, we think contemporary society wants to see this shit show of family. These are the things that are relevant right. to 16 year old teenagers, makeup issues and all that. Like that's not real life shit. That's right. well, the fucking true, a bunch the, of bullshit, the true, but it works. The true authentic people though, are the ones with the power because they're the ones that can convert that their audience to kind of do good whereas yeah. like the kardashians like yeah they might have 20 million plus instagram or twitter followers or whatever but if they truly demanded something their fans aren't going to aren't going to to ride into the fucking gates of hell with these no because they know people. it's fake jt they're yeah. like this is fucking fake straight up dude like I, i'm gonna be we're just gonna be straight up honest here you know when i first got on social media i watched one of best videos mm -hmm. and i thought it was great because i felt like it was real mm -hmm. and i led into that because everybody needs leadership man because leadership starts from the top so i thought dude i just want to be myself man and just put shit out there it's the same thing with kardashians the only reason they're where they're at right now or any type of business savvy is because a fucking tv show got them there right straight up so people are going it was a TV show that got them there. What do these bitches really know about life? Right. If you've experienced life, dude, since you were a kid or whether you've been in combat or not or in the military capacity, so on and so forth, people will understand where you're coming from and they'll say, you know what? This motherfucker is real and he's speaking from the heart and I can follow that because that's what America is craving right now is somebody who says what they mean and they mean what they say and they're real and they know they're not feeding somebody full of shit over a fucking tv channel well, it, right. you know and it's it's face value stuff and i think that's where, the, where you're talking about authenticity where it's like we, we had actually a conversation in the kitchen where it was like i'm cool with someone talking shit to my face because i i respect them as a man and it's the same thing with business right where you want to be transparent in a sense where like this is the obligation even if you don't like the terms you know where those things stand but when you have people that go behind your back and start talking shit behind your back and you in there's no authenticity there, and it's just it's it's a terrible way of life. And friendship, business is not developed based off of that sh that. Well, uh, Matt, you can't respect somebody who uh, says one thing in your face and then they talk shit behind your back for one. But if they can shake hands in your face and say I disagree with you and this is why, right. then there's no way you can disrespect that right. because that shows fucking manhood. And and today, dude, there's too many people that fall short of that and fall short of the glory of being a fucking man. And showing their nuts when the nuts really need to be shown. Right. Are you, so, is that a Marine Corps thing? No, Sh bro, showing just, your nuts. I pulled that shit out of my ass. <laughs> you pulled nuts. <laughs> no, I used to show my nuts in the barracks. Bro. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah I yeah. figured as much. <laughs> yeah. you know. So hey, let's talk about these bases. Uh, how many how many bases have you visited? I've been to almost every base except uh, Hawaii, Marine Corps Base Hawaii. Really? really? Yeah, dude. Oh, I've shit. been invited to every base to give speeches. I've been invited to over the last year to fifteen Marine Corps balls. It's been wild, dude. The Marines. Uh, 
I, I, I respect every branch of service. Let's not get this wrong, dude. I was never in the Army, Air Force, Coast Guard, or the Navy. I was a Marine. Right. And just like you were in the Army, you respect your respective branch of service more just because you know it. Yeah. But I went to Fort Bragg not too long ago, and I walked on with Chris Stapleton, and he was singing that day. And I, I had backstage passes. Bud Light asked me to come out and just be at the event. And, dude, I walked out, and I had so much fucking respect for those Army cats because they came up to me, and they were like, dude, I see your videos, man, and your stuff motivates the hell out of my wife. And, I, you know, we wake up every day and so on and so forth. And I didn't... You know, you sit there and you're like, oh, fucking Marines are the best, or I'm a Navy SEAL, yeah, so on and so forth. And I, and I got it. You, you should be respected because you serve your country no matter what job you did. But, dude, I literally felt like I was a part of the family, and it was the greatest fucking thing on earth. So anytime I go on to a Marine Corps base now, you know, I'm on one every month. I, right. try to, I try to make an appearance on one every month. Dude, I can't go nowhere without somebody stopping me to want to talk to me, and I'm truly humbled by that because it makes you feel like the sky's the limit, man, because... I spent 13 years in. I got out as a gunny, as an E7, and uh, I was a Motor T chief. I had four total deployments max. So my last one was only like three months. But, hey, it is what it is. Right. Dude, nobody gives a fuck about that. Nobody. They care that, hey, you know what? You served your country, and, and that's what really matters. And, right. and, dude, they treat me with so much respect. And in the end, my mission is to not, you know, who doesn't want to make a little bit of money or they want to feed their family, but the mission ultimately is is to empower the veteran community again so that everybody knows that you can get out of the military and you can do something really great with your life. You don't have to make the military your life. You can make it a stepping stone to do something great in the future. Well, it's the same right. thing. I always bridge with the uh, the military service of how essentially like high school is. When like I remember in high school, and I don't know if this is your experience, but someone's like, these are the best years of your life. And I was like, that's the <laughs> dumbest shit yeah. I have ever heard. And yeah. like, I am so thankful for the time I yeah. spent in the military, like experiences that could never be created again. But those experiences should be a stepping stone for where I'm going to go in my life within business yeah. and where I am as, as per, a person and character. Like who I was when I was 21, 22 in the military is not who I want to be as an individual right. at 30 years old. I want to be a more caring, giving person. I think each step and chapter in life essentially sets you up to be a better, a better individual if you let it be. You know? Yeah, absolutely, man. We all have choices. And, and I think that you hit it on the head, dude. Your past is your past and your present is your present. And s High school is fucking nothing compared to what the Army or the Marine Corps or any branch will give you in the future. You know, it's the tangibles and intangibles that you learn from your military service that take you to becoming business savvy when you get out. So when, uh, when did, like, big companies and bases first start hitting you up and, and inviting you? Like, when was that first one? Like, Man. hey, will you come speak? Because you know that's, that's where that path changed. So... A lot of people know that I was a recruiter, man. I was a recruiter oh, really? from 2008 to 2012. And I was at one point, like, on the top of the recruiting game, got meritoriously promoted on recruiting duty. And I was really good at cadence because I loved it. But w the, if there was one thing that I learned while I was out on the streets was you're not recruiting a fucking number. That's where recruiting duty goes wrong or any branch. They're like, I got I to gotta have a number today. I got to have a number. No, you're right. changing no, you life. Recruit. No, you're you, graduates. You're, you're not have, selling cars. No, nah, bro. You had that motherfucker's right. life in your hands. Right. So yeah. they go to bed at night going, I want to be like my recruiter. So I sat there and I thought about that every day because that's the way that my recruiter was, Evan. He was like, I don't want you to be my number. I want you to be my guy. And so I thought, dude, I'm going to go out here and I'm going to fucking slay it every day. And I'm going to do the right thing even when no one's looking. And because I told those kids the truth and said, these are the good times, these are the bad times, here's what you're going to get out of it, and here's what you won't, right. they fucking believed in me. So I took the shit, the tangibles and intangibles that I learned from recruiting duty when I got out, and I applied them. And I had a, I had a recruiter, to, to answer your question, JT, I had a recruiter hit me up, and he said, hey, bro, we were on recruiting together, and you used to call Cadence really good, dude, like you had a, a melody is there any way you would come and talk to my police and talk to them about your personal experience, you know, as a child and on throughout the Marine Corps, so on and so forth, and will you teach them a cadence? And I said, yeah, fuck it, dude. He recorded it and put it on the Internet, and it had like 5 million views in three days on Facebook. Holy shit. It was crazy. And then people started tagging my photos. Within two days of me having my new Instagram, dude, I had 15,000 followers. Holy shit. And I was shit. like, god damn, dude, I, 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 I've got something here. And... And that was the thing. It wasn't about having followers because that's a number. We all know that if our, if our following disappears, it's the people that make you. You're nothing. Right. So I thought, I'm going to go out here, and I'm really going to actually make something of this. So I did one more video, and then Marine Corps Recruiting Command contacted me, and they were like, hey, I don't know what the fuck you're doing, but we got kids telling recruiters that they're joining because of your video. So what can we do to help you? 
And I said, oh, shit. Okay, so what do you want me to do? They're like, go to any recruiting office as you travel. So I was working for a couple of companies doing some marketing stuff. And, dude, I was hitting recruiting stations as I was going. I was doing these videos. And then, bam, it, they just started going viral. And next thing you know, I had 50,000 followers, then 100,000, then 200,000. And then I had, you know, 300,000 pinning friend requests on Facebook and, and all this stuff. And I thought, dude, now at this point I've become a voice, not only for the Marines, but for any military branch worldwide. And what do I got to do with it? So I tried to just utilize it from there. So once Mick Rick started asking me to go and do these videos and start – you know, helping recruit, that's when they, I started getting invited to bases to give speeches and talk about, hey, you spent 13 years in and you've, become, you've come out and you've somewhat become a social media celebrity per the veteran side, right? Because I'm not a celebrity, but per the veteran side, uh, how did you become successful? And, you know, I crack jokes. I'm like, dude, I just did a fucking video of me drinking whiskey, and bam, here we go. Like, that's what Marines do. <laughs> Makes right? two of us. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> so anyway, man, I didn't really follow any regimen. I just did my own thing and boom, shot I think there's a lot of undertones. Like, you can't sell yourself short just saying you made a video with whiskey. There's a lot of, like, emotion and a lot of, like, intelligence that goes into, like, There's core values core's that, value. that, that, right. that you're pushing on to the young demographic. Well, bec- and I'm, that's something yeah. right now, these days that I lack. believe in it, dude. There's too many fucking pussies in this world. It's the new Xbox generation. Like, I came in in 2001 when 9 11 happened, you know, and people were like, oh, fuck, let's go fight and win wars. Well, 14 years later, dude, people were like, ah, I just got done playing Call of Duty and I'm ready to go whoop some right. ass. It's completely different and it's well, annoying. It's, it's, it's becoming right? a virtual world where the, the, the expectation of what reality is is not reality. You know, people have this crazy understanding of what life is and like what business is and all these things it, it doesn't exist because they live in a virtual world they grew up playing video games they grew up in this like fabric fabricated sense of reality i don't know how else to say it but then when you introduce them to re- real world shit they 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 call they are offended and they're sensitive and you're just like jesus christ man this is what the world is like i always say na- nature doesn't know I sensitivity saw the switch. so like the years that you were in recruiting i was in the training pr- pipeline for my career field so i was an instructor and I saw the switch in about late 2009 where kids changed. Yeah. Where you saw, and, and we joked, it was, it was that was the year when dads stopped beating the fuck out of their sons. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <time laughs> Because you, we went, from, we went from, from country, you know, farm kids and stuff like that, guy, guys that played sports and stuff like that that came out that said, I don't want this to be easy, I want to earn it, to, no, I deserve that. Oh, and yeah. the attitude flipped in about late 2009. Well, I th- you know, I don't mean to cut any of you off, but 2001, remember when 9-11 happened and we had our brothers and sisters jumping out of the Twin Towers? We watched that when we were in high school or, or just out of high school. Evan, uh, you were like 40 then, right? Yeah, I was like 50. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, was at, I was at JRTC. I was, <laughs> yeah. I was actually in a prisoner detention holding area because I got scar- scarfed up by the Op 4, so I was wearing <laughs> cardboard flip-flops with oh, a fucking God. loincloth. Really? Yeah, yeah, they came down and they are like, hey, uh, the Twin Towers fell. And I'm like, how does this play into this scenario? Yeah. I don't fucking... And it took like a minute to snap out because we'd been in scenario for three weeks or something like that and they were taking us out of the scenario right oh, shit. but we fuck man it took me like three hours because they're you're so deep into the fucking i mean yeah, I, i'd been a fucking, fucking I, I was in a prisoner holding detention it was no shit on a barge in the middle of the fucking swamp we, you know with guys were speaking fake russian to you and so i was like how in the fuck and they're like no you're not in scenario you dumb what motherfucker you? was that robin sage or what is that no, it was in jrtc oh yeah we they had a whole elaborate sf jrtc yeah and yeah. um <laughs> and uh it, you know it's just weird to me because i i saw i didn't see that shift because by the time i went to war i was at e6 you know in the invasion of yeah. iraq i wasn't e4 or e3 and right. and I didn't have privates. I had fucking Afghanis and Iraqis. Right. My interaction with the younger generation was was super limited as far as that, that was concerned. You know, but I had this like overwhelming, I guess, sense to communicate with with 18, 20 year old soldiers when I could, which wasn't that often. I mean, it really wasn't that often. And I would try to fucking get like, hey, man, wh- why did you join? You know, like. Because I was like, man, this is a fucking, like, at that time in Iraq, too, when I was talking to these guys in 05, 06, I'm like, how in the fuck? And I was always, like, 
amazed at these dudes that were raising their hand, watching the fucking news, going, "You got fucking balls. You motherfuckers have balls." Because well, I think, but it's a different outlook, right? Like, I don't truly, I don't think I had balls. I was naive, but I wanted purpose. I joined in two thousand four. Right. My family had served, and like, I was like, "How do I?" be in the coolest unit the quickest and that's why i joined ranger right. regiment because i was like i want to fucking deploy and it wasn't a thing of having balls but it was pride in my country and the pride that like i'm willing to sacrifice to whatever level even death to like earn my fucking worth for right. what the, the his, like history of my country's done for me i want my little slice of that pie to say i did that and I think that slowly and slowly that that sense of pride is diminishing because you have people that are joining for the completely wrong reasons. Yeah. They're like, I mean, it's a great recruiting tool, right? If you look at like the SEAL stuff and then you look at Call of Duty, people join based off the reason of like, oh, I want the cool guy fucking Peck 15 laser. Right. They have no concept of a bullet hitting your buddy in the fucking head and splatting brain matter. Like, and, and not to be rude, but that's that's the truth. They have no, no concept of that. They want to be. <laughs> They want to be. They want to post a photo of them in cool guy kit and it to be real on Instagram right. and get that like that 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 social affirmation that means absolutely nothing. And so, like, if the concept of like being a patriot and the nationalistic approach to like being a patriot is gone, I don't I don't know where that takes us in fucking the next ten years or a couple of decades. Dude, you hit it on the head, man. You know, going back to that two thousand one moment <clears throat> when the men and women are jumping out of those towers, that was my recruiting. Right. That was recruiting enough for me. I was going, I don't give a fuck what it takes. Like, I'm I'm in because this is really sad, dude. We just got attacked. Like, I'm breaking some legs over that shit. That's it, brother. So <laughs> so as time, as time goes, what happens was America started feeding away from the point that we were planting flags in each other's yards and going, dude, you can sleep on my couch because you're my brother. Right. And whether we've served or not, but they went from that patriotic, hey, fuck you, you just attacked my goddamn country and I'm going to fuck your ass up to, hey, you know what? It's been 12 years. We've kind of forgotten about it. Now September 11th is a holiday and blah, blah, blah. I don't forget shit like that. And there's too many men and women right now whose fucking parents forget to instill stuff in that like them. So there's a different type of generation of men and women who have joined at this point. I, I always say, man, Tank, it's like if 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 you haven't faced like and like adversity to the point of like death or like your whole life will fucking change like a national threat 9-11 we got a taste of it you know but like other than that we haven't had an attack since pearl harbor i mean you no, had the cold no war shit. and stuff like that right so as decades starts start to go by like th these we're a population that's yeah, never been occupied exactly and they, yeah. they have no concept of hey i want to do this yeah cool i'm gonna cut your fucking head off so they yeah. don't understand like how They're dark and crazy freedoms. that can go yeah. so what you're describing is is people that have experienced that and you look at like the older generations and the amount of sacrifice that like the whole nation went through in like World War II. Like we're talking everybody gave up everything to support one cause. And you start to see these social fucking issues like racism and all that. Do we give a fuck if I'm fighting with a, a black dude, a Chinese dude? I'm like, hey, America, let's go, bro. Like yeah. and, and, <laughs> and it's it's that cellular level of like being a patriot. And that's what I always say. It has nothing to do with race, nationality, culture. We all agree. That we're here to be brothers, right? That's but it. then yeah. the farther and farther away we get from that, the more it's like, you know, my, my skin color matters more than you. You're like, no, it doesn't. We're yeah, just the same stupid. fucking people with fucking, you got a bigger tan than me, and or, I don't, whatever the case is. Yeah. Like, it don't matter, man. Or you got a better part. Yeah, you know, like yeah. you got to cut and fade, bro. I don't yeah, got one of that those. hard part, best. <laughs> yeah, you got that hard part. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, and I think, I, I think kind of getting back to what we're talking about with uh, just transitioning from being a, being in the military into self-employment, you know, that the life without fear, right. that's the life that I want to live, which is, and that's every day you roll out of bed and really you can roll to your left, you can roll to your right. But what I tell guys is like, step into it without fear. It doesn't exist. And if it does fucking flush it down the toilet, kick it out the window, fucking exactly. set it on fire, Dude. it doesn't fucking matter. So in this networking circumstance that we, we have to have, in order to be free, you know, to live as free men, absolutely emancipate ourselves from. And when I say that tyranny, the tyranny of fucking stupid people that make decisions for everybody. Uh, and when I say everybody, a lot of people work these nine to five jobs and they're fucking miserable. Right. The 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 point of this podcast is to empower veteran entrepreneurs to work. For can, themselves. can I step in on that too? Please, yeah, dude, you, you gave me fucking chills. Look at that shit. It's it's the exact moment. I had this self reflecting moment where I was like looking about everything that we've created and, and you guys are, are so talented and stuff. I'm like, where did I? Where did? How did I get here? And I was like, man, I just I fucking did it. 
like to the point where like you have all these inhibitions where you're like, man, I couldn't, I wouldn't, I shouldn't. But it's the same thing when you were in the military. It's like that door needs to get breached. Do I want to go in there? Fuck no, I don't. There's a guy with an AK-47, but I got to do it. It's the same right. thing with business where you're like, I'm just going to fucking go for it. And I think that translates to you well because you just got on social media and said, I'm going to be me. Be you. Don't make the easy choice. Make the right choice. Sometimes the, e the right choice is the easy choice. Sometimes the right choice is the worst fucking difficult choice ever. But... You just have to do it and have confidence in yourself because so many people lack that confidence. Like, I, I could never be that guy. I'm like, you were a fucking E4, E5 in the military kicking down goddamn doors. You, you can, can do, do it. it. Trust me, you yeah. can. Just have the self-confidence to motivate yourself. Put yourself through the same worth ethic that you did as a kid and, and roll with it. And I trust me, you will be successful at some point in your life. Dude, if there's one thing, Matt, that I've ever like lived by, and it was in the fucking leadership manual for the Marine Corps, it says the primary goal of Marine Corps leadership is to instill in every Marine the fact that we are warriors first. That's why the United States of America needs a Marine Corps to so fight and win wars. Everything else is secondary. If I take the Marine Corps and all that stuff out of it, Literally, I say to myself every day, you have a choice, dude. You can live in the darkness or you can live in the light. If you live in the darkness and surround yourself with dark people, you will always live in the darkness. Right. But if you surround yourself with people that breathe light every day, then you will always live in the light. And that's what ultimately your friends help make you successful. Every day, dude, I'm like, I need to chase a dream. There's, there's something else out there for me. And that, that's, uh, to be honest with you, dude, that's why I love Black Rifle Coffee. Because it's not just a, a coffee brand. There's so many veterans that are involved with it who are entrepreneurs, not only for Black Rifle Coffee, but for everything else, who are actually chasing a dream to make Black Rifle better, but to make themselves better. And that's what's so great about it, dude, is because you have a hundred different options every day when you wake up. It's just a matter of saying, dude, I'm willing to go fucking get it, or I'm not. Right. And if the military teaches you about being proactive and not reactive and being the wolf that stalks in the night and being the lion that leads the pack, then why the fuck would you not take that out of your military service and take it into your everyday world and, and chase a dream or chase a job or chase something that, that makes you ultimately happy? Because in the end, dude, when you're 80 years old and you die, you die one time, but you have a chance to live every day. So if you're not living every day to your fullest... You, he was a recruiter. You hear that? And, and he's <laughs> dropping bombs, dude. that's dude. it. Yeah. And, you're not, and you're not surrounding yourself with people who help you become better or a better entrepreneur, and then you're fucked. And ultimately, like, when I started getting involved with other veterans, I thought, dude, when I got out, I got depressed, man, because I wasn't around people who really gave a fuck about me. And I could tell it was all about show, and they wanted to know a story or, or hey, man, can we hang out because maybe you're popular. I think that's fucking stupid, man. What I want is to be the lowest guy on the totem pole, and I want to learn from people who are better than me or who are out there chasing it just a little bit harder because that's what ultimately helps you breathe light into your life and – and bring business into your life and pay your bills because, right. dude, it's not about social media. It's not about all these fucking videos and all this crazy shit that all of us end up doing. What it's about in the end is making yourself happy doing what you fucking love. Yeah. And if you're not doing that, then you're nothing. And, and I've had so many people just like you, Matt, or Evan, or anybody that's at this table, I, I know that you've had people say, dude, how did you get out of the military? And I'm not even a voice like... How did you get out and become where you're at? I have it every day, and I go, you know what, dude? I stepped the fuck up, and I started being a voice. For those people who didn't have a voice, I got tired of being stagnant and sitting on my ass and not saying anything. So I got online, and I started preaching what I fucking believed in. I say what I mean. I mean what I say, and I want to fucking chase something. Ten years down the road, dude, I got a 10-year-old kid. I don't want him to be 20 and go, you know, my dad, he fucking got out of the military, and he sat on his ass. I want him to go, my dad's a fucking hero. And whether it doesn't matter what you do in your life, dude, whether it's it's a brand or whether it's just you being yourself. If you tell the truth and you go out there and you fucking apply all the tangibles and the intangibles that the military taught you, you will be successful 100% because any branch, no matter what it is, sets you up for success. As long as you say, I've got it, I'm willing to fucking go get it, I'm going to grab it. That's it. God damn. I'm ready to sign up right now. Hey, yeah. Let, yeah. I, I mean, I fucking Can we love join it, the man. Marines? I love it, no. King. That's fucking <laughs> No, it's spot on. We we have we have like we have we have conversations about this. Like, you know, the guys that that don't spend a lot of time in in the Black Rifle office. Uh we poke, have this conversation. No, no, we, no, I'm saying like the guys that, <laughs> that aren't around us every day, you know, you tank hit it on the, on the fucking nail, which is most of our conversations aren't necessarily about Black Rifle coffee. They're about how do we propel everybody underneath this roof or this brand or under our umbrella or in our network 
quite literally, how do we expand our network and then lift the tide? The tide Evan's, brings Evan's, up Evan's, all Evan's, those. Evan's motto, dude, Tank, Evan, is Evan, can I'd I, rather have a hundred millionaires than a hundred million dollars. Dude, that's right. Can, can I cut in? Can I <laughs> Please, cut into yeah. that, brother? So obviously, you know, networking is your number one thing, right? Yeah. It it's all about who you know and and not what you fucking know in the end, but. What's great about a great company and learning how to network and becoming a part of a company or a brand or whatever you may call it is that if you surround yourself with people who go out there and they, they don't talk about other people, but they're, a fucking, they're about it, don't talk about it, be about it, about your brand and about what you're about, you're going to bring in an entrepreneur or somebody who wants to be fucking great, and they're going to make your brand just 10 times better because they not only, if you can believe in the person, you will believe in the product because... Right. Ultimately, the product is built on the person. Right. And I think like people often like success is like I, I consider it like a bubble. Success to me is relatively very small based off of like monetary gain. Like obviously I need money to do that. But like the whole work ethic and like meeting guys like Evan Hafer, who's probably the most fucking intelligent, motivated guy. I know the fucking savant himself, Jared Taylor. Like that's a part of my success every day I wake up because I, I can pay my bills and their friendship is a part of my success. So it's like this multifaceted thing where like success is just not monetary. Like you can be the most rich, richest person in the whole fucking world and hate your life. And I always say it. So it's like building success is like good relationships, which is a part of network building a business, which is a part of networking as well. So it's just like this multi combination of things that ultimately go, how do I live a fucking, uh, a, a dedicated, positive life to whatever that success is, you know, like if, if success is finding who you are and being that person, like then, then search for that. And you're going to need other yeah. people to support you. It's the same thing you were saying earlier. Like everybody's going to have their fucking down moments, but if you surround yourself by positive outgoing, like supportive people, then I'm going to be positive and supportive. Oh, Cause when I'm like, Hey, yeah. uh, fuck man, I had a hard day. Like, Half the time, like, my, I went through a relationship, had some she should have had, and they fucking make fun of me. And I laugh at myself, and I go, thanks. I needed that quick fucking moment of reality. Yeah. And that's why I surround myself with people like that, because they check me. When I fucking need it, they check me. I bounce back, and we're back together in a little success bubble. Like, well, what are we doing today? Yeah. You know, Dude, you, you surround yourself with dogs. You catch fleas. You surround yourself with angels. You fly in the fucking sky. He's got all the Straight things. Good. You know? <laughs> I, I, I like said dumb banter Straight for, like, up. fucking I feel like Mike seconds. Tyson right now, yeah. dude. I just came out yeah. of fire. I'm like, yeah, I'll fucking eat your no, kids. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Listen, yeah. I will fuck you. I will suck your dick in the fuck your asshole you're like what you're, this yeah. is a fist fight like, where the fuck did that come from <laughs> man are you shitting me yeah. but it, it, it is it's 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 so true man like every, every day when, when you tell when you talk about like rolling out of the left or rolling out of the right there are days when you just you don't really have a lot right where you're like you're fucking down or you don't have a lot and honestly like these guys and the guys that are internal especially you know matt and jt both they they inspire and motivate me every day and so it's not just my family, it's the guys that I surround myself with because I know that they're working fucking just as hard or harder than I am. And that is a fucking incredible ecosystem because you really don't have the option to fail because you know if you got a down day, you come in, somebody's going to fucking kick you in the nuts or they're going to fucking pat you on the back well, it's or they're going to tell you, go take a nap. Yeah, you surround yourself <laughs> by people that like, they can, they can fulfill your shortcomings where it's like, I have writer's block. I'm like, I haven't written for four weeks. Like there was a point, this was like two months ago. I was like, fuck, I haven't done anything big. I've been focusing on all these other efforts. Like how do I facilitate? Whoa, Black Rifle's doing good. And then Evan's like, I got you. I fucking doing emails and target market, blah, blah, blah. And you're just like, holy fuck. Like there, there's, there's, it's a support system. It's the same thing with any like social fucking environment. And business is a social environment. It's like, how do you support each other with your shortcomings? Like, and it's it's fucking awesome and it's taken honestly it's taken jared like nine years i don't know how long you it's yeah. taken me i fell into jared when well, i fell into you but like <laughs> I, I ran across you fairly yeah, you early did. on in my bit and we, we've learned a lot of lessons we've had to cut a lot of people out of our personal lives because we've been fucked over but it's about like evan said building that ecosystem in business where if someone's a leech on that environment you gotta cut them out and as hard as it can be sometimes you're just like you gotta go because yeah. you're not benefiting this either you know it, you have to be you have you have to be benefiting the overall goal of of the business or you you just shouldn't be there dude if somebody's not beneficial to the program that you're running or whatever plan or vision that ultimately is supposed to turn into your dream then you got to get rid of them motherfuckers because ultimately there's so many people out there who are just as loyal if not more loyal to you or to what they're trying to accomplish which is maybe the same thing right you bring them in dude and your fucking business or whatever it is is going to flourish you know like 
I, I, I'll just use that as an example, the man spot. He's not a veteran, okay? Everybody knows that. He's never claimed to be. But the beautiful thing about it is, is every day I wake up and I see him doing some videos or posting a picture or something like that. And, dude, I'm really popular in the veteran community. Got it. But I look to him for a little bit of motivation because yeah. this motherfucker wakes up and he makes crazy-ass videos. And I'm like, what made him come up with that, dude? He's bashing the fuck out of his microwave or something. <laughs> but, <laughs> but in the end, dude, the cool thing about it is, is it actually him bashing his microwave or whatever has inspired me to take it a little bit step further, you know? Like, so true. Dude, if you're not willing to step outside of your box, dude, you're always going to live in the box. And if you don't have somebody that you surround yourself, like you said with Matt, or said earlier, Matt, like, if you don't have somebody that brings light into your life, kind of the way you summed it up, dude, if they're not willing to open that door for you, then you're always going to be stuck, man. You're always going to be stuck. And you can, you can have a million or a billion dollars, and you can have people who are your friends because of that money. If you network and you socialize yourself the right way and surround yourself with the right type of people by being, by being correct, telling the truth, and being fucking honest every day and chasing your dream, you'll have people in your life who are really meant to be there who will ultimately take you to the fucking top, dude. And when you get to that mountain, you'll be able to plant your flag like you've never fucking planted it before. And the cool thing is, is on the way, Evan, you have, will have planted pebbles that you and the rest of your team and so many other people that follow you on social media because they knew you were real and you did it for the right reasons will follow you to the top, and they'll be able to get there too. It's not about yourself. It's about what you don't give away, you don't get back. And if you give away things like laughter or you give away things like motivation or inspiration, it's going to inspire those people to do the same things, which right. will ultimately build your following or build your business or whatever else that you're out there searching, which ultimately will make you successful. Because let's be honest, you may be the head of the thing, but it's your people that are the neck that turns it. And if you cut the neck, your fucking head rolls. Right. So make sure you take care of your people and the people who make you successful and everything else will fall into play. Or you can just be like me and network with Jared and Evan knowing that his social media presence is going to die off in two years and then just leech off them for the next <laughs> 10. Dude, that sounds collect right? a paycheck for the yeah. rest of your life. Yeah, yeah. let's do it. Start yeah. now, brother. Yeah. Start yeah. now, yes. Yeah. Am I on the Black Rifle team now? Yeah. 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 I'm yeah. in, dude. I, I just invested. So. I we just so. brought him in. I just invested. Yeah, yeah, fuck yeah. Well, hey, Tank, thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you so you much for, for the wise words. I think, I, think, I think the audience is going to love this Dude, I, I honestly, this is fucking rad. This is like, I could take this show for like three fucking hours. Right. <laughs> take it well, well, we'll have him back uh, maybe tomorrow or the next day. We'll just do yeah, we'll round two. Uh, round two. Round two. Round two. Man, I'm always down. down. Tank. I'm always down. <laughs> and then, uh, if you want to, if you want more Tank, uh, go ahead and plug your your social media. Yeah, dude. Maybe. So my Instagram is Tank Machine. My public figure Facebook is Tank Machine, and. I have a personal. I don't like to give it out because it seems like I get too many titty pics, you know. But yeah. whatever. You just kidding. Hey, that. just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I man. I, I, I really nudes. appreciate. Listen, man. From the bottom of my heart, I appreciate uh, Black Rifle Coffee Company, Evan, and the rest of the crew, Matt, um, Logan, JT. Thank you guys for having me. Oh, thank you. I, I feel blessed, and you know, to be honest with you, man. Without veterans, we wouldn't be able to sit here today, dude. Yep. We wouldn't be free. We wouldn't be able to say and do the things that we wanted to do, and and. You know, the, the moral of the story about all of this stuff is if you want to fucking be a go-getter, go be a go-getter. You can be proactive or reactive. You can sit on the couch and not do shit for the rest of your life, but when you die, you will be a nobody. If you want to be a somebody and you want to change somebody's lives, go out and fucking say something. Go say Join something. the Marine Corps. Be something great. <laughs> yeah, sip her fucking five, motherfuckers. <laughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen. But yeah, thank you guys thank so you. much. No, thank right. you, man. From Appreciate Las you. Vegas, Matt Bess, Evan Hafer, Tank Machine, NJT. We're out. Thanks. Awesome. And hi, Logan. <laughs> Black Rifle Coffee Company, along with Parson Wave, would like to thank you for tuning in to Blackhearted. Have a great fucking day. <laughs>